What's up, future respiratory therapist? Hey, it's Valentine's Day. I just want to say happy Valentine's Day to you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Now, we know that for some, uh, Valentine's Day can be a magical day. And so I thought that it only made sense that today we talk about the magic box. So let's jump into it. Before we start talking about how to actually work it, we're going to actually talk about why do we need to understand the magic box? And the magic box brings us back to air to oxygen ratios. And you say, well, why does that matter? Well, what we have to realize is, is that if you have somebody on oxygen therapy that's receiving that therapy through any type of air entrainment device, this could be a Venturi mask, an air entrainment mask, a, a trait collar, a T-bar, a face tent, anytime you're hooked up to an uh, an aerosol nebulizer, that's an air entrainment device. And what we have to understand is that the FiO2 that is coming out of the flow meter is 100% oxygen. But when you connect it to these air entrainment devices, what happens is, is that there's room air that is brought into the device to dilute the 100% coming from the flow meter down to the desired FiO2 being delivered to the patient. And so you basically have to turn sweet tea into not so sweet tea. In other words, you have to take 100% oxygen and turn it in to 40% oxygen, which means we need to dilute it. And we do that by entraining room air. Now, depending on the size of that window, and you know what I'm talking about, you look at an, look at an aerosol nebulizer, and you, you, when you change it from 28% up to almost 100%, you'll notice that the window where the air entrainment is happening, it gets smaller. And it gets smaller because the higher you increase the FiO2, the desired FiO2, then the less room air that you need to dilute it down. And so you're going to see this pattern when we talk about this and do some examples up here. You'll see what I'm talking about. In other words, 28% requires a lot more room air to be brought in than, say, 60%. And, and we'll look at that here in just a second. So the question is, is okay, well, then why do I have to do the magic box? Well, you have to do the magic box because you have to know these air to oxygen ratios. Now, you can memorize these, but then you have to bank on the fact that when you need this information, you can remember what you memorized and there's a lot of them i mean this is coming out of egan's page 919th in the 12th edition they give you the air to oxygen ratios for everything from 100 all the way down to 24 and there's about 10 or 12 of them in the middle so if you can remember all those then kudos but if you can't here's what you need okay here's your golden ticket to not having to memorize all of those air to oxygen ratios okay now for me i remember 40 percent because 40 percent is three to one and three plus one is four 44 i got it four i also remember 60 percent because if i could remember that 40 percent is four three to one then i can also remember four plus two is six and 60 percent is one to one okay so i remember those two and then I also know 28% because it's one we commonly do with our long-term tracheostomy patients. So I know that 28% is approximately 10 to 1, okay? Which means we're bringing in 10 liters of room air for every one liter of, uh, that the flow meter is set on. So you see how that works? If you raise it to 40% for every one liter that the flow meter is set on, you're bringing in three times that of room air. If you go up to 60% for every one liter that the flow meter is set on, you're bringing in one liter of room air. We don't need 10 liters to get to 60% because 60% isn't that diluted from 100%. And so that's why we have to do this. That's why we have to know this formula, okay? Now, here's what the magic box says. It says, if you are ever asked, what is the air to oxygen ratio for 40%, okay? Then you're going to put 40% right here in the middle, 
okay? So your desired FiO2 is 40. You're going to put 20 up here, and you're going to put 100 down here, okay? Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to diagonally subtract these two numbers. So we're going to do 20 minus 40. Now, 20 minus 40 gives us a negative 20. But Egan says disregard the sign. We don't care about the negative. So we just know that 20 minus 40 is negative 20. So right here, we're going to say 20. Okay? So we work diagonally. Now, we do the same thing here, diagonally this way. 100 minus 40 is 60. And here's what we're left with. Now you say, okay, that, that, that's not my air to oxygen ratio. It's not. But now we have the numbers we need to divide by. So now they're already in order, okay? So now you just have to divide 60 by 20. So 60 divided by 20 equals 3. And your air to oxygen ratio for 40% is 3 to 1. So whatever you divide on the bottom that becomes your value here on the side. So it's three to one, okay? Now, you say, okay, well, let's do another number. Okay, well, let's clear all this out. <clears throat> and I told you that 60 was one to one. I can remember that one. So let's do 60. 60 goes here, 20 goes here, 100 goes here. We move diagonally across. 20 minus 60 is negative 40, disregard the sign. And we're gonna put 40 right here. 100 minus 60 is 40. So now we just divide. 40 divided by 40 equals 1 to 1. For every one part of, of, of oxygen that you're delivering, you're bringing in another liter of room air. Okay? And that, that's how that looks. Now, let's do one more here. Um, let's do one that I didn't say. So we can say, okay, well, does it work for all of them? Let's just say we wanted 50%. 20 here, 100 here, move diagonally across, okay? So 100 minus 50 is 50. 20 minus 50 is negative 30. We're going to put 30 here, and we say, okay, 50 divided by 30 equals what? Well, let's just see here. I believe it's 1.6, but I always like to use my calculator when I'm not certain. So let's just take a look at this and see. 50 divided by 30, it does. Well, it's 1.7, 1.6666. So we're going to say this is 1.7 to 1. And that's our air to oxygen ratio. What does that mean? For every one liter of oxygen that we're set on, we're bringing in an additional 1.7 liters of room air to get it from 100% coming out of the flow meter to 50% to be delivered to the patient. Now, you're only utilizing this with your air entrainment devices. That's point number one. So you always got to know when do I use the information that I've been given? Well, if you're on a nasal cannula, a simple mask, a non-rebreather, um, you're not doing this. Because those aren't air entrainment devices. Your Venturi mask, your trait collars, your, 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 your T-bars that are hooked up to aerosol nebulizers, those are your air entrainment devices, okay? And that's when you're going to have to calculate these things. So if, the, if you're ever taking an exam and the question starts off with patients on a four liter nasal cannula, guess what? You probably don't have to worry about air entrainment ratios. You probably don't have to, you probably don't have to worry about air to oxygen ratio. Because it's talking about a low flow device. And that's really what this all comes down to, right? Is why does this matter? And it matters because we have to understand that our air to oxygen ratios ultimately affect the total flow that is being delivered to our patients. I'm gonna say that again. Air to oxygen ratios ultimately affect the total flow delivered to our patients. And remember, anytime you're using an air entrainment mask or an air entrainment device, you're working with a high flow device. The definition of a high flow device is a device that meets or exceeds the patient's inspiratory demand flow 
and precise, provides a precise FiO2. So we're not guessing how much they're getting. We don't have to approximate it. We know exactly how much they're getting when we set it up correctly. Total flow coming from the device is greater than the patient's inspiratory demand flow. Okay, keep going. That's what I'm here for. We got two scenarios here. FIL2 of 28% and an FIL2 of 60%. Now, work these problems out, okay? What I want you to do is figure out the air to oxygen ratio for both of these, the total parts for both of these, and then the total flow. Now, to get to total parts, you just come over here and you say, okay, if 50% is an air to oxygen ratio of 1.7 to 1, then my total parts, add these together, are 2.7. Okay, that's total parts. Parts, that means that every one liter is actually 2.7. So if we're on 10 liters at 50%, then our total flow is going to be 2.7 times 10. It's going to be 27 liters per minute. Okay, all right, I'm tracking. So come back here and work through this. Pause this video, then come back, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to keep working here. Now, I told you that for our FIO2, we're working here at 28%, okay? Now, we already did 60%. We know that 60%, the air to oxygen ratio was one to one. One plus one equals two total parts, okay? Now, two total parts at a flow of 10 liters per minute, 10 times 20 equals 20 liters per minute. That's the total flow that we're getting to the patient. Now, here's where the magic is with this, right? Because if I was to ask you, what is the flow being delivered to the patient? Some of you may have said, well, we're set on 10, so it must be 10. But understanding this concept right here of air to oxygen ratios and how that affects total flow, you say, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're set on 10, but because we're delivering 60%, with an air entrainment device, for every one liter, we're actually bringing in one liter of room air. So it's actually two total parts for every liter. If we have two for every liter, two times 10 is 20, okay? Now, we need to come back over here and do this side over here. So 28%, let's go back and do 28% here, okay? All right, so we're gonna put 28 right here. This time we're gonna put 21 right here because the lower you get down to room air, the more accurate it will be if you will use 21. So anything 35% or less, you will get a more accurate number if you utilize <clears throat> 21 in that top left corner. This always is 100. So we say, okay, well, what's our math here? 21 minus 28 equals negative seven. We don't pay attention to the negative. 100 minus 28 equals, I believe, 72. 100 minus 28 is 72. Fantastic. 72 divided by 7 equals 10.2. So we just call it 10. It's 10 to 1. Okay? That's our air to oxygen ratio for 28%. Come back to our table over here. What's our air to oxygen ratio? 10 to 1. How many total parts do we have and are we working with? 10 plus 1, 11. We're on 10 liters per minute. 10 times 11 is 110 liters per minute. Now, my point here is, is that if you have a patient who is receiving therapy, one is 28%, one is 60%, they probably don't need to be on 10 liters per minute because 110 liters per minute is going to be an excessive amount of flow. If you only need to exceed, say, 28 liters per minute, you take their minute ventilation times three to get a rough estimate, right? So if somebody has a, a, a minute ventilation of, let's just say 10 times three, that's 30 liters per minute that they need we exceed that by far. So we could turn this down from 10, we could turn it down to five or six and still exceed their inspiratory demand flow. 
the room will be quieter. There'll be less aerosol hitting the, 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 their neck and, 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 and their area around their tracheostomy collar, and it'll still do its job. But over here, you see, we may need to go higher than 10 because look, our total flow is significantly less because there's less air being entrained. See the difference? 28%. A lot of room air entrained to get it down from 100 to 28. A lower FiO2. Everything else is the same from the set flow, but we're delivering a much higher total flow. We probably don't need that much. This one, we may need a higher set flow. If we increase this set flow to 14 liters per minute, then we would now be delivering 28 liters per minute. And that might be more appropriate. That's air to oxygen ratios. That's the magic box. That's total flow. And that's what you need to know to be an exceptional respiratory therapist. All right, <clears throat> I wanna show you something here because I'm very excited about this. Everything you just saw is one or two formulas that are built into respiratory therapy, okay? It's just hands down. People say, oh, I got into respiratory because I didn't think there was any math. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's a lot of math in respiratory therapy. I'll tell you how much math there is in respiratory therapy. I just created this course right here. It's a mini course for $9.99, 10 bucks. And you get six hours worth of content dedicated to nothing but respiratory therapy formulas. That's the whole six hours. We cover about 40 different formulas over the course of about 33 different videos practice problems with answers and lesson summaries so that you understand not just how to do the formula, but why we are doing the formulas. I'm excited to share that with you. Check out the video description below for access to that course. Now, I want you to know the boot camp is always available and this course is within the boot camp. Okay. So if you buy the boot camp, then you're also going to get access to this course. It's all within the same shell. So if you're looking for more resources to make your educational journey easier, I got you covered. Okay. Now, you know where to find me. Here you are on YouTube. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, the like button, comment. Tell me if you like this video or not, if it helped you. If it didn't, I want to know so I can constantly update my content to your needs. So thank you for being here. Come find me on Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, and then send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Happy Valentine's Day. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.